Noughts and the Frown Fish by Miomi. It was a quiet and rainy afternoon at the bottom of the ocean when Professor Inkling was dusting his dust jackets. Quasi Kitten was watering his catnip. Tunip the Vegemal was tossing a salad. Peso Penguin was pinging. Shellington Sea Otter was ponging. Tweak Bunny was playing a game. Captain Barnacle's Bear was singing in the rain. Dashy Dog was sounding the octo alert. The crew hurried down to HQ to find Dashy monitoring the octopod screens anxiously. There's a fish with a very big frown outside. She reported to the others. He looks so glum that all the creatures around him are starting to get upset too. I can't find a fish like him on the Octonet, Dr. Shellington said excitedly. Could he be a new species? Octonauts, we should investigate, Professor Inkling declared. Up close, the little fish looked even gloomier. Why are you so sad? Dashy asked with concern. But the fish only replied, Glub, glub. What a dilemma! None of the octonauts spoke, frownies! Perhaps if we understood his language, then we could help him, Dr. Shellington proposed. Shellington and Dashy spent hours in the lab trying to learn Frau Nies, but it proved to be a very difficult language to translate. I don't think we can work much longer, Dashy sighed. I'm starting to feel unhappy myself. Let's think of other ways to cheer him up. Playing music with my friends always brightens my day. Peso shyly suggested. He invited everyone to pick up an instrument. As the crew gathered together to play a happy song, other creatures joined in. There was a clam capella group, a sea orchestra, and a baritone whale. Unfortunately, the frown fish didn't have an ear for music and continued to pout. It's hard to feel sad when you're being glamorous, Quasi announced with a flourish. Let's have a dressing up party. The little fish tried on many different costumes. But none of them could disguise his sadness. Dashy held up her favourite camera and asked, Why don't we visit the famous snail gardens? We could have a photography field trip. The octonauts took photos of big snails and little snails, striped snails and polka dot snails. The frown fish, however, wouldn't even smile for the camera. A game of miniature golf always tickles my fancy, revealed Dr. Shellington. The group putted and swung their way through many aquatic obstacles. Sand shark traps, sea dragons and electric eel tunnels. The frown fish scored a hole in one on the king crab course, but he didn't look any happier. I like working with my paws. Let's build something, Tweak suggested. Surrounded by gadgets and contraptions, the crew constructed a robotank for the frownfish. Tweak stood back and admired their work. Now our friend can use his new sea legs to visit us inside the octopod. If possible, the frownfish looked even frownier. Tunip chirped eagerly as it led the group into the kitchen. Vegemals love to cook and bake. Maybe the frownfish is hungry, 
Dr. Shellington interpreted helpfully. The whole crew set out to make their favourite pastries. They baked barnacle cakes, barnacle muffins, and even a fancy barnacle souffle. The frownfish ate an entire plate of biscuits, but he still looked unsatisfied. There's nothing like perusing the printed word to stimulate the intellect and galvanise the imagination, Professor Inkling exclaimed to a confused crew. To the library, my delightful colleagues. Professor Inkling read from his favourite book of jokes, but the frownfish didn't laugh once. Frownfish must not have funny bones, Inkling decided. The other octonauts weren't too sure. They didn't get the jokes either. I always feel better after I exercise, Captain Barnacles said. The octonauts swooshed down the slide, clambered up the climbing frame and rode the seesaw. Peso and the frownfish sat on the merry-go-round while Quasi pushed them faster and faster, until, whoop, the frownfish flew right off. The little fish turned, bounced, and rolled over. Everyone rushed over in alarm. They had only been trying to cheer him up, but now he might be hurt. To the octonaut's surprise, the frownfish had a big smile on his face. Of course, Professor Inkling realised. He's not a frownfish. He's an upside-down fish. There are different types of fish that swim upside down. It's easier for them to spot food. This chap is a fine example of an upside-down catfish. Everyone laughed in relief to discover that their new friend had been smiling the whole day. The catfish made a big rrp and turned himself back upside down. Or was it right side up? The End <laughs>